The Sisters Grimm podcast is intended for mature audiences only. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to the Sisters Grimm podcast. It's your girl, Holly. And your girl, Morgan. And we are, again, recording remotely, meaning we are not together, so we are difficultly trying to do this through Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> and it's I don't not think easy. Either, either of our internet connections are not um, great right now. Well, I thought mine was until now. <laughs> Right. But you're also up in the attic. So this episode is going to be about the Fear Street trilogy that just premiered on Netflix. But I did have a couple shout outs I wanted to give at the top of the episode. Okay, do it. So I have been getting really into some horror creators on YouTube. Specifically, there's this guy. His name is Zach Candy. And for all of our huge Scream fans out there, and for those who listen to our Scream episode, he does this really cool breakdown of all of the movies and basically breaks down which killer is doing which kill at what time and, like, all of the reasons why. And it's so interesting. And he also does, like, a breakdown for every... Well, he's only done the first two so far. But he does a breakdown of every single horror movie reference in the Scream movies and, like, really explains them. And it's just super interesting. I love then, that. A, yeah. And then additionally, I've been really obsessed with this girl who is possessed by horror on uh on youtube also and she does these really funny like kind of like ranking videos so she'll do one for like horror movie tropes horror movie killers saw traps like she she broke down every saw trap and like ranked it in a certain way from like kill me there's no way i could solve this to like kevin McAllister. <laughs> okay so i just thought of a great porn maybe version or like or something maybe they could do. I don't know. They're, like, expanding on the Saw universe so much. So what you just said, right. when you said, when you said, what, Saw traps? What if they were, like, thirst traps? So, like, to get out of them, you have to, like, be sexy. Send a full picture. <laughs> you, yeah, you have to, like, show your glow up. You must post a butthole photo to the internet and tag your grandma. Oh my god, that's dark. <laughs> you know, listen to our Saw episode because it's so fucking funny, by the way. Yeah, it's pretty um, good. And there's a new one out now, and I haven't seen it yet. Oops. I haven't either, but I've heard not great things, which makes me sad because I love Darren Lynn Bowsman. He's who directed the third, or the second, third, and fourth movies. And so I was kind of sad to hear that it was not better, but... I've heard it's kind of, like, nostalgically good. It's just, like, the actual, like, storytelling is not the best. <laughs> yeah, it didn't do great on Rotten Tomatoes. And lately, I have been not letting Rotten Tomatoes dictate what movies I watch, horror movies specifically. Yeah. And um, it's not working out so well <laughs> for me. <laughs> I watch... Well, I don't, like, don't want to get up on, like, my, like... Rotten Tomatoes, like, high horse Beef. or anything, but I do know that a lot of it has to do with, you know, paying uh, movie reviewers money to review your mo your movie well, and that's why certain movies get really high ratings and why other ones don't as much, and so it's a little bit of a political agenda, so I'm not totally that caring of it I I think that that... I think it's both. I think, like, it's, like, obviously get out is like a really fucking good movie so that's why it has it like other horror movies you know that are have like really high rankings you know but well and like old movies too like with like old movies that weren't i don't know how long rotten tomatoes has been out but like you know i i doubt it was out when scream came out so like i would guess that scream's rating is a little more realistic whereas like brand new movies maybe don't trust the the review right away right um yeah, you are right because what year did uh, what year did Scream come out? Ninety six. Yeah, ninety six. Um, yeah, Rotten Tomatoes was launched in August of nineteen ninety eight, so it is almost their so it's like their birthday. But yeah, no, I think you are right because there are some movies on there that like have a one hundred percent and they have like 
three reviews and I'm like, um, what? But this movie I watched last night and anyone who has Shudder, there's a movie called Confessional and it is so, so bad. And Oh, I was right down to like maybe watch, but if it's bad, I'm definitely no, 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 not no, 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 no. It did horribly on Rotten Tomatoes and rightfully so. It okay. was so bad. It was next level bad. And like also everyone in it um, had been on the TV show Dexter at some point. Like the main girl was, um, you remember Trinity Killer's daughter? Mm -hmm. She was in it. No, That's too long. They're redoing Dexter now too, and he's there, which means he didn't die. I don't know. I think we're getting a little too off topic now. I know he didn't die. He went away and became a lumberjack. But I digress. I never saw it. Any hoozles. It was bad. So let's get these Fear Street movies. Yeah, let's start out with Fear Street 1994 well, Part 1. Talk about about the entirety of the of the series and the books and all of this stuff before we actually get into the movies themselves. So wait, you want so, to talk about the books first? The books? What's up with all these books? Well, I just blurb um so fear street is a horror fiction series from writer rl stein who we probably know a little bit better from the goosebump books because those kind of took off a little bit more goosebumps is the more like kids friendly version of these books and fear street is more for like teens and young adults it's like but nickelodeon and then the cw period except and this is also going off on a complete tangent but like i'm going to do it anyways i found out some really fucked up shit about who is that guy maria who is the guy from good burger you knew his name i didn't kel oh shit yeah Dan morg my phone is too hot Dan my phone is too hot morgan my phone is going to turn off. Fuck. God damn it. Well, that was a fucking nightmare. A little clusterfuck. Morgan stopped to ask for Maria a question. It was so hot, my phone died. That was like a week ago that we tried doing that now. Hello, we're from the future. <laughs> now it's Friday the 13th, baby. Or we're recording this on Friday the 13th. Let's try to put it out on Saturday the 14th. I mean, I'm going to try to put it out tonight on Friday the 13th. I love that, Holly. Yeah, I mean, we got, what, four hours left until that? Yeah. Isn't Should I anymore? jump back just right into what I was talking about in Fear Street? Well, um, hold on. I feel like there was something I wanted to say about the books also. Um, sorry. <laughs> so well, you guys I might hear... I have stuff to say, so can I just say mine while you look? Right, but I was just going to uh, give a warning to the listeners that there are cicadas outside, and also it is Riverfest in Ottawa, and so there might be some music. I heard someone doing a cover of um, Four Non Blondes' um, What's Up song, and um, yeah, so that might pick up a little bit, but yeah. Uh, continue, Morgan, with your knowledge on the okay. Fear Street. I'll just pipe so, in when well, I have something. I think all I really said was <clears throat> the Fear Street books are kind of the more rock and roll version of the Goosebump books. Yep. And uh, Fear Street did come out first because the first Fear Street book came out in 89, but the first Goosebumps book did not come out until 92. And so while there have been over 200 Goosebumps books written, there were only 17 Fear Street books written in total. No, there's way more Fear Street. There's just a bunch of... They just have spin-offs. Oh, really? Well, I guess there's only 17, like, original. That's what I was reading. Well, that was, like, the first one. But there's so many Fear Street spin-offs, and that's, like, where they got... Um, Goosebumps well, from? Yeah, well, that's where they got the Fear family from. So, right. the Fear Street saga is what introduces the Fear family and how they're cursed... But in the books, it has nothing to do with a witch. Um, and there's no witches at all, actually, in any of the Fear Street books. Um, I think there might be one where they think someone's a witch, but they're not. <laughs> um, Interesting. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, the books are literally 
they're book versions of they're like slashers. They're just slasher books. They're great, and, and they're not they, the best, but they're they were kind of ahead of their time. I feel like. I mean, look, I read a lot of them. <laughs> they were horny. They were on for whatever reason. My fifth grade teacher thought it was cool to keep them in the class, and I was like, Love "She that must her. not know." Thank you, Mrs. Cooper. Cooper. We love. Yeah. Cooper. Um, so interesting about the fear street um so there's actually like a lot a lot a lot of them okay so i was wrong about the this what i said anyway like the original if you want to be like a purist <laughs> yeah you're being a purist about this which we always are no i'm just kidding but um so with the development of fear street it was um developed at 20th century fox in 2015 it actually intended to be released through three movies across three months so essentially a very accelerated version of what they did with like the lord of the rings trilogy how those came out every year yeah you know like a lot of books or a lot of movies did but um so 20th fox were or merged with disney and so when that happened they didn't want to make like these r-rated like slasher films and so they then kind of like it was up in limbo until the pandemic happened and then netflix kind of swooped in and bought the rights and honestly i think it was such a better idea i think so too so wait hold up though oh the people who didn't want it said that they didn't want to do slasher yeah, they basically didn't think, like, you know, horny teens and, like, murder, like, intense murder was very, like, Disney-friendly. I mean, they, the only difference is they choose to kill the bear people in different ways, like having Scar throw Mufasa right. off of a cliff. Right. Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. Anyways, um... It's kind of ironic to me that it wasn't originally made for Netflix because when I saw that Sadie Sink and Maya Hawk were both in it, I figured it was a very Netflixy kind of like family vibe situation, you know? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I thought that too, and I also thought that. Um, I thought, why else did I think that? Oh, because it seems kind of it seems like a Netflixy t- type of thing to do to like to release the movies the way they did. Yeah. And I, when I was reading about stuff, it kind of seemed like some people were confused as to whether or not these were movies or if it was, like, a miniseries. Oh, uh, definitely movies. But it's definitely, like, um, a film franchise, and I just don't think that, uh, as a society, we are used to sequels coming out so quickly. <laughs> it's but- very, it's very, um... I mean, like, honestly, I, I can't think of any movies that are doing exactly that, like any franchise or anything like that. No, like, they usually very... wait a bunch of time because of yeah. box office stuff. And also, I mean, the way that they released them I'm in for on Netflix, we, you couldn't do that the same way because the first movie would still be in theaters. So, right. so it works also, out really well. Also, something that I found out and thought was really interesting since it does <clears throat> have kind of those like those stranger things vibes with like the super nostalgic feel it's funny because lee <clears throat> janek the woman who created all of these movies is married to stranger things co-director co-creator ross duffer fuck off she's related to one of the duffer brothers she is wow good for her getting in on that family so so i thought it would be fun if we went through them in the way in which they came out but then at the end we both do an individual ranking of the three movies hell yeah sure morg let's do that why wouldn't we go through them chronologically in (laughs) in the order in which they came out opposed to the the years in which they take place which wouldn't make sense so we'll start with 1994 94 so um i loved the like beginning homage um, to scream, yeah, and I loved how in the store, like all of the books were written by Robert Lawrence, which is what RL stands for in RL Stein. Well, there were also a lot of, um, what was I going to say? There was also a lot of, um, our uh, Fear Street books, and then there was also a Joseph 
Heller, the guy who wrote Catch-22, there was, like, one of his books that I just kept seeing over and over again. Um, um, but, yeah, I was definitely getting Scream vibes with the opener, and, like, even just, like, because obviously the calling, all of that, but also Maya Hawk probably being one of the <clears throat> better-known actresses in the movie being murdered right away is very reminiscent <clears throat> of Drew Barrymore in Scream. Or not even, like, well-known, but just... A character well, that you Netflix. Well, I mean, but I not as she's not as big as what I mean. I mean, well, she's obviously no Drew Barrymore. No, but, but I think it, it's is. someone that you would typically imagine would be in this movie for the whole thing to get killed first. Well, and because I think they knew their audience really well in knowing that people that like Stranger Things are probably also going to really like this and watch this you know well they must have really thought that because and we'll but we'll talk about that in the third one but so like in the beginning but we can talk about it again more in the third one i guess but when i was watching this movie so she's there at nighttime and it's closing and her like friend is there he brings her in Orange Julius. He has a blow-up doll. <laughs> he clearly works at, like, a Spencer's Gifts. <laughs> yeah, 100% Spencer's but Gifts. But the whole mall is lit like a Spencer's Gifts in that when all of the light mall lights turn off, it looks like a fucking raver. Like, all of the lights are, like, black light, like neon lights. And as someone who has worked in two different malls it's that's not ever the no case. <laughs> i've worked in a mall too morgan and that you are correct that is not what it looks like at all no um, but it was vibey as fuck yeah no totally um so this one has you know like a little group of friends dealing with shit like how much how much do we want to get into these movies in terms of like well, so i guess we can beat? give it like- I feel like anyone who's going to listen to this has probably watched them, and if you haven't, this podcast is really not going to mean very much to you. <laughs> I well, will. I think maybe we can like go about it with like pointing out the things that we really liked and maybe the things that we didn't so much like. Okay, yeah, let's talk about things that like that that like stuck out to us because there's one so, that that's really stuck in my craw. <laughs> Okay, well, I just, I loved the part, and I don't feel like, because I've watched a ton of videos of people reviewing these movies and whatever, talking about them, and no one has really spotted, or maybe they have, but I just really like the part when they are, like, inside and, like, you know, one of them's babysitting across the street, and then, like, they're having a phone call. It's oh, very, it was like, so Halloween. Very Halloween. It was exactly it Halloween. Them. It reminded yeah. me exactly yeah. of Halloween, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's and that's, the skull face guy in those is actually a character from a Fear Street book. Oh yeah, I think you're. That sounds. That sounds right. Um, yeah. So my what? Some my question is, uh, where are the parents in these fucking movies? You never see D- Dina and Josh's yeah. dad. They say he's and a loser alcoholic, about- but it seems like he has a job because he's never there. Well, yeah, there, he's talked about enough that I feel like we should have gotten at least like a minute scene of him anything like do you think they casted because, someone as him and then his uh shit got cut or do you think that they didn't even bother honestly not sure because i don't know but it kind of feels like maybe that got cut out because i do think it like even like just in that first morning scene when like the two of them talking like if the dad just like came in and said something like like at least really like, anything a little bit more like, they say he's, like, is he just at the bar 24-7? Also, so there's right. that, that girl, Sam. You see her mom for, like, a hot second. But then, like, when they go back to the hospital, her mother is, like, nowhere to be found. The, like, only adults uh-huh. are, like, a couple cops who are very easily duped. Because children yeah. children are stealing um, uh, vehicles, like, police vehicles and ambulances so easily in this movie and it's totally fine. They can just, like, park anywhere. And no one's like, hey, why do you guys have that uh, cop car? But, right. yeah, so that was, um... Oh, and then um, the lady... Oh, another Netflixer. Um, I can't I can't think of her uh, name in real life. But she plays in Ozark. And she was, like, nurse... Yeah! The nurse. I can't think of me either. But, yeah, the woman from Ozark, she's in it. Yes. And then she is also in part two, which we'll get to. But, um... I think what everyone is walking away from part one really talking about is the fucking bread slicing scene. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was like... <sighs> A.K.A. head slicing scene. L O L O L skull. But also, like, it was just... I will say, like, it's creative to see the, like, having her OD on pills and then, like, they have to bring her back to life. That I thought was really creative and interesting. Okay. I have a lot to say about that scene, actually. Okay. I don't think, yeah, I don't think that would really work, but, yeah, no. what do you have to say? So, <laughs> that scene... So, this is, like, the very end of the movie. They basically realize, like, they need to kill Sam for, like, a second and bring her back to life eventually. And so she take, starts taking pills. They're in a grocery store. She starts dry swallowing these pills where there are, have to be so many beverages around them. Why do people do that in fucking movies? Why are we always dry swallowing pills in movies? People, it wouldn't that, it's work. It's not realistic. It's more gross and she would be barfing, yo, because like the pills would be like literally. But well, and I mean, maybe not so much in Sam's case. And, like, maybe this is just, like, a little too whatever. But I feel like if you're using pills to kill yourself, you're trying to go out in a very easy, peaceful way. I don't think you're dry swallowing them so that your last couple whatevers is literally just choking in your esophagus. Depending on the pills, well, I don't know. But, so, then they completely uh, abandon that idea. And then they decide to drown her. her. Yeah, Dina drowns her. And then they... So the my favorite part is probably the EpiPen stuff. Because they just take, like, five EpiPens and just jab her in the chest. And even... So so I, maybe it's supposed to be, like, uh, fucking Pulp Fiction. Yeah, I was getting that vibe. But... Um, I mean, it is obviously a movie, and this movie obviously has some magical realism aspects, but in any case of, you cannot puncture a heart, because a hole in your heart, yeah. bad. Always bad. Also, EpiPen needles are maybe not even an inch, so they wouldn't have even reached anything. So, the fact that she finally just starts fucking pounding on her chest doing CPR, that was fine. All of the pills and all that other shit. Also, there was a scene where, like, um, so Sam and Dina are, like, dating, and they have, like, a little cute moment, because everyone thinks they're, like, gonna die, so they have a moment, and then Dina's brother and the girl whose head gets, like, fucked up in the bread machine, they have, like, a cute little moment, and then Simon, this other dude, is just in the bathroom jerking off. Yeah, I mean... Cause he's like, cause when they're all back together, he's like, "Wait, did everybody get some? Or like, did everybody go to Pound Town?" <laughs> right. Me too. <laughs> I, it was again. I will give it originality, creativity. I yeah. It, one of the only horror movies I know where someone took a break to jerk off uh, and let everyone know about it. Yeah. So should we move on to part two? I mean, do we talk about the fact that there was music in the movie take that took place in 1994 that didn't come out in 1994? I mean, we could if we want to be like every other person who's talked about these movies. <laughs> oh, they do that? Well, then I don't fucking want to be well, them. Well, I just think it's like, listen, it's supposed to be nostalgic of the 90s in general, and so I think going a little outside of the parameters is fine, because then when we get to 78... They do, obviously, a huge homage to Friday the 13th movies, which technically came out in 1980. However, any holiday, like, like kind of horror movie is pulling inspiration from Halloween, which came out in 1978. Oh, fuck yeah. So I feel like, you know, can we all just fucking chill and enjoy what it was made to be and stop, like, nitpicking things? So I'm much. just saying. I'm just saying. No, All I know. I'm just, that's literally what every person has to comment about it, and it's well, like, okay. But have they? Has it, okay? Uh, tell me this. Has anyone mentioned anything regarding the fact that they would have 100 percent have to have known that those songs came out after 1994 because they were the ones that had to buy the rights to use the song in the movie in the first place? Well, yeah. <laughs> they talk about that. Oh, n no. Well, then, ha, I did have an original thought. Okay. So, so should we get on to 78? <laughs> I mean, I feel like we didn't really... I mean, so the first one is basically like a... 
it's a slasher film, but but these movies, the uh, final girls are like cool and they fuck. <laughs> Because usually in horror movies, it's like the virginal characters. The final girls in these movies fuck. Oh, yeah, for sure. I I was going to say, I was going to definitely bring that up with the next one, especially because, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen these, the more like, I mean, obviously both of the sisters are virgins, but the like more goody two shoe one is the one who dies. Oh, no, I think Ziggy's fucked. I don't know. That kiss seemed very delicate and like it was a first for her. You can fuck before having your first kiss. I mean, anyway. So we also get a lot of David Bowie references because the dog's name is Major Tom and then Ziggy is Sadie Sink's name. Also, I think Sadie Sink did the best acting performance in this entire franchise. I would have watched three movies all about her. What about her performance? Oh, man, I cannot wait to talk about the next movie. Okay, we're still in this one. I know, but um, I'm really excited to talk about the next one. So, yeah, obviously they are paying homage to not only Friday the 13th, but other Ooh, um, movies totally. around this time. It gives me uh, fucking Sleepaway Camp vibes. Yeah, the, I was going to say that. So, like, um, uh, that character, oh, I, th- I uh, her name's Sheila, that girl that's, like, the real bitch to Ziggy. Yeah, yeah. And, like, literally, <laughs> literally, literally, literally literally tries murdering her in the very beginning well and just having like the younger kids in it was a little bit more sleepaway camp than Friday well, the 13th but the Friday the dear- 13th is usually I mean obviously it's like it's straight but like the original ones were usually always the counselors before the campers got there dying right yeah no but I was just gonna say do you remember Judy from sleepaway camp and they both like yeah. meet Meet their demise in the bathroom, but not really, because right. we don't know what happens to Sheila. Oh, yeah. That is a weird plot hole it's a for gaping. me. Like, Sheila gets knocked out by Sadie Sink in the bathroom in that scene, and then Tommy comes in, and he just either doesn't notice her to kill her, kills her off screen without us knowing at all, or, like, we don't know. Because she would also technically be a survivor of that. Like, are we to believe that he either went back and killed her, or that, like, Sadie punched her so hard that she died. Well, he wouldn't kill her because she is from Sunnyvale. Well, some Sunnydale people die. I know. That's what a plot hole for me. Yeah, they didn't really keep with their... That's Okay, so, and I'll get to it more in 66, but I will say that there's a lot of setups in these movies that I don't feel are followed through with great <laughs> oh yeah there's there's uh what's your example or like what did you feel the two things i just said but then like just 60 i mean i i'll get to it more when we get there but 66 in general was just tonally it didn't even go with the rest of the movies it just kind of to me seemed like the creator really liked the movie the witch and yeah. like they could have easily done some of that with flashbacks but without the, like, nostalgia of, like, the music and, like, just, like, the time period, it, I was very bored. And, like, it's Wait, are we on the third one now? Uh, well, because I was going to say that I thought it was interesting that, um, just, like, in sort of that vein of, like, camp movies, like, Shadyside and Sunnyvale, like, in this, they go to the same camp. And clearly it works for, like, this movie, but, like, in any other camp movie, like, the rich kids would have, like, their own camp, and then, like, the shady, like, side kids would have, like, their own shitty camp. You know what I'm saying? And Mm -hmm. then, like, in the end, like, they would come together. But, like, for some reason they put them together, and maybe they didn't want to make two Well, there's not usually, like, multiple camps in, like, a Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. In um, Heavyweights, there's the rich kid camp, and then there's the fat camp. Yeah, that would never happen in real life. Well, no, neither would any of this. But, but like, it, it, talking about camp scenarios, like, I think it makes sense that they're, like, together. Because the it, it'd be like, uh, you know, all the people in our surrounding areas by where we grew up would probably all go to no, camp. No, I agree that it makes more sense in reality. I'm just saying in movie sense, they usually really, really try to drive that, like, home the fact that, like, these kids are pieces of yeah. shit poor like that's their them talking not me i think they're great yeah um 
So yeah. I also thought it was really unrealistic that there would be a bug um, cabin, but it made sense for the story because of what happens. But I was like, in what camp is there a bug cabin? Like, that yeah, is I'm sorry. Not- <laughs> I know that I only stayed at camp for like 18 hours, but I know that etymology isn't usually something that one can do mm-hmm. at camp. It'd be really interesting. Like but maybe not. No, it was so so much. So, yeah, let's get It'd be like, just go outside and fucking look at the bugs. Yeah, you would just go outside. You wouldn't go into a building to look at bugs when you're yeah, at a that's fucking That's like the camp. whole point of camp. Anyways. That's the whole point. So, 1666. Yeah, we're moving on. I, I uh, honestly can't complain whether or not they played music of this time period or not. <laughs> well, okay, fair. But um, another thing that I found out is that there is actually a town called Shadyside, and it's in Ohio. Um, that's like, cool, but in in 1666 there was no Ohio. Oh yeah, I was gonna say there's no there are no European settlers in the area until 1879, and Ohio itself was not settled by Europeans until after the American Revolution, and there yeah. were any never there were any only in the states. Every person I have told, uh, you were not one of them, but I told two different people. I told I was like, in, yeah, in 1666 there wasn't. Ohio and then someone was like um what's his face or like I don't know it was stupid but any who's all yeah no it wouldn't have been a thing it wouldn't have been a thing so they I don't know why they had to put it in Ohio don't yeah know it's like put it in goddamn you know one I mean, of the 13 kind of goddamn like original colonies in Massachusetts but also it would have just made more fucking sense you, you you had 13 colonies to choose from. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So also, so, also... So basically what I was saying about like how I just don't feel like this totally landed for me is just because it tonally felt so different from the other movies. And then also I felt like it, they went a little too like in the trying to like be in the same route of American Horror Story with using the same actors for different roles. But like, I have a theory. It on that, really though. did not work for me. Okay, well, let me see if this changes your mind. Because when I thought of this, I was like, "Holy fuck!" So I was thinking, and I, because like, when you see, so at the very end of like the uh, second movie, Dina like falls into like what is basically like a fucking pensive from Harry Potter. Oh and yeah, she it also turns looks like in, the, thing, um, the cabin in the woods. Too. Yeah, and she kind of turns into Sarah Fear. So because there's like this other girl oh, who is yeah, Sarah that, Fear. That, that. I was thinking of something else. And so what I think what happened is that she some Dina like either like had like a dream or something, and like Sarah was like showing her this vision, and so it like transported her to that point in time where Sarah Fear was killed and she was experiencing it as Sarah Fear. And because, like, she's in a dream state, that would explain why all of the people in the other movies that she knows about would okay, be the village sense. people. And it would explain, like, why her brother is still her brother. And it would also explain why their accents maybe are so bad because <laughs> their accents yeah. are so yeah. fucking bad but no holly that does actually make a lot of sense and because... i feel like they could have somehow made that make more sense like maybe she gets hit and passes out or like they gets electrocuted of... but yeah the way they yeah. did it was so random and just kind of like i get it they were trying to make a really dynamic like switch between the two and like I mean, I was literally saying this when watching a movie yesterday because it, it was doing that movie trope of someone crying into the mirror, which never fucking happens. But movies love to do reflection shots because it looks great, but it's just kind of like sometimes it is a flop. Yeah, it falls a little short. But yeah, I think that, that had they like made that more known, then I think that it makes it better because I do agree with you that like putting – all of those characters and trying to do kind of like an American horror story vibe doesn't work. But I think looking at it from this, like from the perspective that um, Dina, like Sarah fear basically like put yeah. Dina into that place. Cause like, even like the character Thomas is still named Thomas. They all have other names, but well, Thomas this is, is still what Thomas. doesn't also make sense though, is like, if, if it was her, like, 
pulling people from her own subconscious, she wouldn't have pulled young Ziggy and Cindy. She would have probably pulled older Ziggy and, like, other people that she knows because, like, she didn't know them and she didn't know Tommy. Like, she obviously, like, knows of them via a story, but she doesn't know of them via what they look like. And in the same, like, argument, then why wasn't Alice in it? Because Alice was my fucking favorite character. So when she wasn't in it, I was kind of like, okay. I mean, like, obviously it wasn't, like, perfect and i don't even know if like that's i mean that's kind of what it makes it seem like it's supposed to be because it seems like like when dina comes out of it and they come back to 1994 which i was so happy i uh uh, i didn't like it i only thought it was cool once i thought that maybe that was like the reason i just don't think that they had a thought out enough plan for 66 i think they just thought it would sound maybe they just thought 666 was cool i don't know why they had to go with boring it didn't i mean like yeah it kind of explained things but like only someone barely said, and some, like again could have been done through flashbacks someone but, yeah, said I was frigid happy bitch back to 94 someone said frigid bitch you know what that no one said frigid bit but if it, it was dina's dream then it would make sense that people would talk that way yeah so. there's a lot of like if ands or buts that um but she wasn't <laughs> even a witch She's a witch, man. No, she wasn't a witch. Oh, right. Yeah. They no, just killed no, her. No one ever was. Or, like, she, she never maybe was a witch. they were. I don't know. No, but like, she wasn't was a witch. The way that people thought. No, the goods made, like, a Faustian deal with the devil. And so, and he picked Sarah to kill yeah. because she, like, wronged him or whatever. Um, and what else was I going to say? I liked, like, the whole, like, tying it up with the whole, like, the Nick Good of it all, and I just especially really liked the kid who played him in 78. Him and Sadie together was, loved that. I also, and this is, again, just totally opinion-based, but, like, I kind of wish Sadie would have played, um... Dina's character? Yeah. Just because the actress who played Dina, it's just, like, I don't know. I, there was something that I just didn't, like, absolutely believe, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get that. But all of, well, not all of, but, like, her and Sam were both just, like, so, like, Eeyore, which I get, but, like, they were just very, like, toned down characters that didn't have a ton going on. And even, like, the reason that she was so mad at her was, like, really stupid it's like girl you can't be mad that your friend has to move that is not her choice she is a minor she has to go where her parents move yeah you have to, people have to move with their mom and dad they can't just stay there where yeah, is she gonna it was live a little toxic on dina's part and yeah. i just didn't necessarily love the character of dina or sam enough for them to be the real power behind the oh, whole franchise i felt but, like i loved ziggy and cindy so much so i almost wish that they would have been the more in the movie duo because yeah. I think they had such good chemistry and they were so good. I loved, I just loved them. I um, I felt really old I, when I was watching the first one and Sam and that boy, I can't remember his name, but they're like making out and he like grabs her butt and I'm like, I shouldn't be watching young people making out like this. And grabbing each other's butts. And grabbing each other's butts. I'm like, I feel like, I'm like, this is, no. Come on, guys. Luckily, the actors, I believe, are all over the age of 18. Yeah, I think they're all, they're all really old. The kids from Stranger Things are, like, in their goddamn 20s. Oh, back to Stranger Things. She must have been like, hey, honey, so, like, that mall scene, I want to do one, too. Yeah. (laughs) But, like, my... We're talking references, like it's i mean it's very similar like it like like visually color wise but i can also wise. see but like because i mean stranger things did it because obviously malls were a huge thing in the 80s and there are some pretty good horror movies honestly the only one i can think of is chopping mall but that movie is fucking perfect and so i feel like they're like whenever whenever these two times when stranger things and when the Fear Street movies did it. I feel like it's kind of like a homage to that, even though theirs are obviously way better because Chopping Mall was not a great movie. But uh, no. um, I just I don't know the uh, I don't know. And Chopping Mall was eighties also, right? Chopping Mall was eighties. Yup. 
Uh, it has... What I will say about all of these movies as a whole is if you don't go into it wanting to absolutely pick it apart, because obviously we have a podcast, so we're talking about it, we're picking it apart, because otherwise, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Besides a retelling of what you could watch. Right. But if you are if you go into it and you don't have that mindset, and you're someone who loves horror movies, and you specifically love older horror movies, but you also like, like, really gory, like, current movies, and, like, I think you'll, you would really enjoy it. Cause oh, yeah, they're good. alone makes me, like, I will rewatch these. They're really, they're really good. They're very Especially, good. Especially, well. And they did it we... better, if they had taken uh, the dialogue from a Fear Street book, it would have been uh, absolute garbage, because they're, like, <laughs> kind of hokey, the books. Uh, yeah, shout well, out, so shout out to now. What Holly Heard. The book where a girl named Holly hears something and then gets murdered with her turquoise scarf. So anyways, do we want to move on to the ranking portion of these? I mean, I don't think it's going to take very long for me, but let's do it. Okay, you want me to go first? Sure, we sure, just go for okay. it. So I, I think it's no surprise that 66 was my least favorite. I just don't think it fit in with the rest of the movies. I liked part two, and so I'm glad that the whole movie was not just 66, so I do appreciate that they gave us, like, a full wrap-up, and I do think the wrap-up was actually good at the end as well. Though I will say I would have loved to have seen more from some of the really scary fucking killers that we only see, like, glimpses of. Like, the kid who, like, stabbed his family in that scary-ass mask, like, He's scary as fuck. But, yeah, um, a lot of masks yeah. in these movies. So could have had more of that. But yeah, so that's 66. So runner up to that would be uh, 94. Again, I just didn't feel like the characters of Dina and Sam were strong enough. And I also felt like the two like stoner kids were a little too like like in your face about it kind of well the character thing. simon was very obnoxious <laughs> yeah i did not like him at all um not even for comedy's sake because we didn't really need it um but i do i, I just think like commentary. visually and again nostalgically 94 because i mean i only have lived in the 90s of all of these timelines so to me it definitely felt really nostalgic and i especially really liked the beginning and I liked some of the things that they did. I liked the gore that they did. Um, and then coming in at number one would be 78. I This is the only one that I have so far rewatched, and I've rewatched it three times. And I. Three think, times? Well, I watched oh. it the first time by myself. Or not, uh, sorry, okay. I watched it the first time with Maria, okay. then I watched it with you. Then I put it on to take a nap, and I couldn't stop watching because it's so good. And I just really think the characters in this did it for me because even like some of the like side characters that we didn't see a lot of, like the really hippy dippy girl, like I loved her. Like I thought she was great. I wish we would have gotten more of her. I liked, I liked her. One kind I... of goofy like counselor, the one who's like trying to help pull them up in the bucket and then gets his head cut off. I really liked that was very that. Goonies. Very Goonies. Um, yeah, I liked, I loved Alice. Her boyfriend was fine. I mean, he dies early, so it's fine. I didn't love him as much. Loved Alice so much. I really liked the sisters. Um, I mean, it was, in my opinion, the most brutal because, like, we saw children being murdered. And, you know, that's a lot. And it was also definitely the most sexual. Like, it was just the most, like, in your face, like, we're doing this. Like, this is Fear Street, bitch. And... I honestly think they could have just put out Fear Street 78 and people would have really liked it. And if they had, like, done it somehow a little bit different of a story, I think it would have been a great standalone film. Yeah, I don't necessarily think it needed to be three movies. Yeah. I mean, I liked 94. I mean, my... I mean, uh, mine is... My my ranking is the same as yours, obviously. Because, I mean, the third one was really bad. The first one was pretty good. And the second one was pretty, it was good. <laughs> they were all totally watchable. Like, I've seen plenty of horror movies that are not watchable. And, like, even though I, like, I go through the whole motions of watching the entire movie, I'm like, I will never watch this again. All of these movies, like, 
if, you know, someone really wanted to watch them who had never seen them that I was hanging out with, I would totally rewatch them with them. I probably wouldn't rewatch 94 or 66 alone, but like. I really I like 94, actually. I think it's kind of a tie. I don't know. I really liked 78. But there is something about. Ni- Maybe I like 94 better. Okay, go off. <laughs> Maybe I do. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just over the whole camp thing. Like, I love well, it for yeah, what it uh, is. A lot of people feel that way. But I'm kind of over that. And because, like, American Horror Story tried doing it, and I didn't even finish that season. I couldn't. That was the first American Horror Story season I couldn't watch. Did it was just, and I it was truly awful. don't care. Um, can't wait for um, the Monica Lewinsky thing, though. Um, oh my god however i do think i liked so yeah i think i may have i i, I had fun I, I felt fun watching the first one i had a lot of fun watching yeah. it and you know Me what too. fuck it i kind of liked simon <laughs> <laughs> i am yeah, simon i am simon i would have jerked off like, by myself as much as i gave it shit i there's parts of 66 that i do really like again things that weren't realistic i don't think the townspeople specifically like the pastor's daughter is gonna just be like tripping balls like out in the open like i don't think that's super realistic i hate it no that part was so fucking stupid they should have literally just done like they should have done like the 50s drinking Literally, they could have just drank because kids were oh, definitely drinking. Me yeah, you time. know what people weren't doing in the 1600s? Dropping acid. Hallucinogenics, really, in general. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Oh, all right, well, again, we're also, like, we're definitely a little late on these. We've had some technical issues. We've had some heat issues. Um, but these movies did all come out in July, which I thought was... A lot of people are like, why didn't they come out in October? And it's like, dude, it's summery. Like, we love a horror, a summery horror Blockbusters. People- summer. Hey, y'all. Jaws. That's all I'm going to say. And also, they're not, not going to be, com- they're not competing against all of the Why would they want to compete against content. Halloween? <laughs> yeah, they want to compete against all the horror content that's going to come out. Um, again, just another side note. Um uh, Mike Flanagan is coming out with a new show on Netflix um, that's not, like, affiliated at all with Hill House or any of that. It's, like, a new, different thing, and I'm very excited for it. It looks really cool. The lighting that Morgan is in right now is very much the end of the third Fear Street movie. You literally look like you are at that mall. I know. I look cool. I'm also wearing my Friday the 13th t-shirt. Oh, another big thing plot hole if what if we can still talk about these movies for a second is sure. the whole blood thing like it so yeah. if you have the blood of like the person who's like basically it like they get tagged basically and if they have you have their blood on you like the killers come after you but it is not consistent whatsoever no and also, like, why is no one wiping their nose? Like, if your nose bleeds, you're going to go like this and wipe at least probably once or every couple. You know, you're going to wipe your goddamn face. I no know. one's just letting blood crust Well, up it on doesn't the, work for, for a for movie funsies. because they would fuck up the blood capsule <laughs> and their anyway. makeup. It doesn't work for a movie. It looks – it's people in movies, like, this, when people – whenever in horror movies, like, someone's nose starts bleeding, it's always like, oh, shit <laughs> – yeah, it's like, never. Oh no, <laughs> something's close. Something bad is happening. Like it's like, never maybe it's just, just like dry. Or exactly. You're in an elevated location. Right. Like maybe it's just like the dry season. Fuck. I don't know. Maybe you picked it too hard. I don't know. But um oh, God. when you really, really look into these movies, you're going to find plot holes, issues, whatever. Yeah, don't but start it, pulling threads. If you go into them literally just to have a good time and like watch them with friends. Like, it, they're very enjoyable, and I'm happy. Morgan and I watched they, the second one together. Yeah, I'm happy they exist in the Netfer, the Netflix <laughs> universe. Netfer. Netfer? Do you I need to? Know. I'm the one who's sitting in our 90 degree attic, <laughs> and Morgan's saying Netfer. Well, anyways, this was a fun episode. If the sound is not the best, that's because we are chaotic fire signs who are trying to figure this shit out. 
for you guys, those of you who are still listening. Plus, isn't something up with the moon? There's, like, something going on with the moon right now that's, like, fucking everything Oh, it's everything the Lionsgate yeah. thing. Yeah, and honestly, dude, like, I'm not going to, like, say anything, but, like, Lionsgate? Up, it has happened to people that I know, and I have been very fortunate to only feel it emotionally, but, like, it's, it's not a joke. <laughs> nope. All right. So that has been our episode. We can't wait to talk to you guys next about our next thing, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs>